Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe the stages of glycolysis. You should then be able to state the end products of glycolysis. In the last video we saw that during respiration a glucose molecule is gradually broken down. And if you haven't seen that video then you need to watch it now. At different stages the energy contained within glucose can be transferred to other molecules. Now this energy transfer can take place in two different ways. In some reactions, the energy transferred can be used to produce a molecule of ATP directly. I'm showing you an example here. In this case, molecule A is converted to molecule B, and this reaction releases energy. The energy is used to form a molecule of ATP from ADP and PI. Reactions like this are called substrate level phosphorylation. Alternatively, a hydrogen and two electrons can be removed from a molecule. This is called a dehydrogenation or oxidation reaction. The hydrogen and two electrons are transferred to a hydrogen carrier, such as the coenzyme NAD, forming reduced NAD. The reduced NAD is then used later to produce ATP in a process called oxidative phosphorylation. Ok, so in this video we're looking at the first stage of respiration which is called glycolysis. There are two key facts about glycolysis that you need to learn. Firstly, glycolysis takes place in the cytoplasm. And secondly, glycolysis does not require oxygen. Now glycolysis actually consists of 10 different reactions, but for A-level biology we learn a simplified version. I'm showing you here a glucose molecule. I'm representing glucose as a chain of six carbon atoms rather than a ring, as it's easier to visualize. In the first stage of glycolysis, the glucose molecule reacts with two molecules of ATP. These ATP molecules each transfer one phosphate onto the glucose molecule. So this is an example of a phosphorylation reaction. This reaction activates the glucose molecule, making it more reactive. The product of this reaction is called hexose bisphosphate. In the next stage, the hexose bisphosphate splits into two molecules of triose phosphate. This is a lysis reaction, which means splitting. In stage 3, an inorganic phosphate ion from the cytoplasm now reacts with each molecule of triose phosphate. This is a phosphorylation reaction, and we formed two molecules of triose bisphosphate. In the final stage, each triose bisphosphate molecule is converted to a molecule of pyruvate. During this reaction, hydrogen is removed from the triose bisphosphate molecules, so this is a dehydrogenation or oxidation reaction. This hydrogen is added onto NAD, forming reduced NAD. Also, each phosphate group on triose bisphosphate is added to ADP, forming ATP. So for each triose bisphosphate molecule, we make two molecules of ATP. And this is an example of substrate level phosphorylation. Ok, I'm showing you here all the stages of glycolysis. We need to work out the net or overall products of glycolysis. At the start, we used two ATP molecules, but later we produced four ATP molecules. So the net yield is two ATP molecules. We also produce two molecules of reduced NAD. These reduced NAD molecules will be used in a later stage of respiration called oxidative phosphorylation, and we'll see that in a later video. And finally, we've made two molecules of pyruvate. Now you'll notice that glycolysis has not released a great deal of energy. That's because the pyruvate molecules that we formed still contain a great deal of stored energy. This energy is gradually released during the later stages of respiration. In the next video, we look at the next stage of respiration, which is called the link reaction. 